Right, let's move on here. New Year's. Me? <laughs> nice. Let's wow. move on here. I'm talking about hard drives. New Year's brings out all sorts of predictions, and on the eve of 2009, our next guest had this to say about commodities and the dollar. I'd be buying these dips in commodities, buying some of these stocks abroad, and getting out of the dollar because it's a bottomless pit. When this dollar stops rallying, it's going to fall like a stone. Uh, not too bad. Since that's a prescient call, the dollar has fallen 10%. Gold, well, that's up some 50% or so. The always shy and reticent Peter Schiff of Euro Pacific Capital is actually back here on set with his top three predictions for 2010. Peter, it's a pleasure to see you in person. Thanks for having me in. Walk us through the top three here. U.S. economy will be in worse shape. What happens to foreign stocks? What happens to gold? What happens to the dollar? Well, the U.S. economy is in terrible shape right now, and it's only going to get a lot worse. You know, Time Magazine ran a, a, a headline a couple of weeks ago where they labeled the decade that just ended the decade from hell. They were wrong. That was a decade from sin. This is the decade from hell because now we're going to have to pay for all those sins, right? Last decade is when we borrowed all this money, we printed all this money, when we, we had the housing bubble, we had all this reckless uh, spending. We're going to have to pay for it. The problem is we're still committing the sins, right? We still have interest rates that are too low. We're going deeper into debt. We're not allowing the but economy Peter, to go through Peter, we're shaped in what? In other words, you know, we've just had a great PMI number. We've had housing numbers that in terms of the housing indices that were up off of. We're on multi-month highs. We're seeing labor. We're seeing jobs. Job we're maybe going to getting a positive print in December. It's Why? all relative, but I mean, no. worse than what? Housing prices are still too high. The only reason they're not falling, which would be a good thing, is because the government is artificially propping them up. You have 0% interest rates. You have tax credits. You've got the Federal Reserve buying up mortgage paper. You've got 96% of the mortgages being guaranteed by the federal government. That is not a good thing. This is a huge well, problem. Well, it's, it's a Band-Aid. I mean, and it's about a stimulus to, to extend this. I mean, housing, whether it, it's too, too expensive or not, you're seeing the economy recover. No, no, we, you're, you're, worse. no you're not seeing the economy you recover. Are. What we're doing is we're going going deeper into debt and we're spending money but beneath the surface the economy is not recovering the economy is getting sicker and well, that's why at the end of the year you're going to see unemployment higher than it is today you're going to see interest rates higher than they are today and you're going to see inflation higher than it is today at the end of the day meaning by the end of 2010 the end the end of the decade yeah the end of the year the end of the year okay so if I, so put those pieces together if you see unemployment higher and the economy not doing well where does the the inflation comes from the dollar being weaker or where, where do you get the well, the inflation part comes of that? from the fed i mean inflation comes from money supply growth and the fed creates inflation that's what they're doing but ultimately but if banks are lending but, money there's no money in circulation i mean the velocity the, the, money is not sure they are they're lending they're lending it to the federal government where, who do you think's financing the national debt well it's it's, it's the, the countries of the world that you've actually been talking about no but a lot of it is mean, being financed through our bank banks aren't lending the so i mean there's no inflation. they're not they're they're not lending to business, they're lending to government. The money is still getting into circulation. It's being spent into circulation through government. It's certainly going in through the financial There's markets. There's no inflation anywhere. There is inflation. Inflation is the expansion of the money supply. It's, the money supply is growing rapidly. Not until it's, expa not no. until it's inflationary. No, in no, other it, words, it, it, money is not moving around in a place where you have It's already the inflationary. You're, you're, you're looking at prices and saying, well, prices aren't rising. Prices should be falling. Inflation has prevented prices from falling, which is what we needed. But Ultimately, you're going to see dramatic increases in prices. I mean, oil is up $2 today. Oil is at $81.50 a barrel. It sounds like you're Do you talking about You think that could be happening without well, inflation? But Peter, talking, other, than a, sorry, for, other than a cocoon, though, if I'm an investor sitting at home listening to you right now, I want to go into a cocoon. What do I do? Where do I invest? Do I keep putting money into my 401k? No. What am I supposed to do right well, now at the beginning look, of 2000? The same themes that I hit upon last year are going to work this year. I don't know if they're going to do as spectacularly well as they did in 2009, but you've got to understand that the dollar is going to lose a lot of value, and the U.S. economy is in serious trouble Against because what of what the federal government continues to do. The mistakes that the Fed is making, is the there, face is of Congress. Is there, no, Peter, any sort of discounting mechanism in the market? I mean, one year ago, we didn't know half of what we knew. We didn't know even some of the caveats. But those caveats are being well talked about on the airwaves by you, et cetera. We all know that we're going to have to pay the bill at the end of the day. Haven't we sort of accepted that fact in some in some no, fashion? I, not at all. All we look, all we've done is set ourselves up for a much worse economic fall than the one we had because the Fed has created a currency crisis that's coming. It might even hit in 2010, but it might hit in 2011. But when the dollar collapses, and it's not just going to go down 10 percent. I'm talking 50, 60, 70 percent or more decline in the value of the dollar. And it's going to send prices ballistic in the United States for consumer goods. It's going to send interest rates into the stratosphere. And if people think the economy is bad now, imagine how much worse it is when all the unemployed people, when you can't even buy anything with your unemployment checks because prices are so high. So, Pete, given your scenarios, which I don't disagree with entirely, but 
is there a short in retailers at some point? Is that a name or an area we would get specific Look, if short? The, the, the worst place that you can invest money, if you're thinking about investing money, you don't want to be in any retailers in the United States. You don't want to be in the financials. You don't want to be in, in the areas of housing. Across the, only the place board, you, there's not even one that you like. No, no, because uh, Amer Americans are going to stop shopping. We're broke. We're done. Americans have to start, start saving. Unfortunately, they're not doing that yet because interest rates are still too low. Eventually, they're going to be a lot higher and Americans are going to start saving. But that's what you have to understand. We've already spent too much money. The future for America is going to be in exports, at least for, for the immediate term. We've got to start saving our money and producing so that we can sell products to people abroad who can actually afford to buy them. So they the don't export have to buy stocks them. are the place we should be, though, then. So you're, if, you're playing into the coal, the steel, and all those types of things, and everybody who ships yeah, them as well, If right? you're going to invest in U.S. stocks, that's exactly where you want to be. The problem that I see as an investor, and the main reason that I'm not... I'm not playing it from the U.S. exporters. I'm specifically buying overseas companies that derive 100% of their earnings outside the United States. The big problem with trying to play the global recovery, and the global economy is probably going to boom in this coming decade, but the, the, if you try to play that from the U.S. perspective, A, I think you're paying too much for stocks. You can get much better valuations by investing abroad. But I'm also very afraid about the regulatory scheme and higher taxes that I see coming for U.S. corporations, especially U.S. corporations that manage to make money. I can see windfalls profit taxes coming not just on oil companies, but all sorts of exporters right. as politicians try to vilify the companies who are earning profits and try to seize those profits, you know, it, it, you know, to try to for the common good. Peter, gotta go. Always a pleasure. Thanks for the lively discussion, as always. Sure. Coming up next, we.